So a surprising number of people, that, well, surprising for my little channel anyway, when I put up the when we put up the video for the all black snakes that you could keep as a pet that aren't Mexican black king snakes, several of you asked for could we do one with white snakes instead? You know, all white snakes, and I went, all right, give the people what they want, right? So let's get rolling into it. So the difference when you when you generally think about white snakes, we'll we'll start here at the beginning or white animals in general, most people think of albino, right? Well, there's actually kind of two different things generally that most people that we're really talking about, which is albinism versus leucism. Um, did a whole video last year. It's one of the earlier ones, but the information's still good. I'll try to remember to put the tag right here and you can go check that out. Today, we're mostly talking about leucistic animals, which are the white animals. So there's a lot of different proteins and things and reasons why they end up being white or albino. Um, and again, I go over more of that in another video. But as far as I can tell, as far as snakes go, as far as I am aware, there are no naturally occurring, like, like you know, nature has picked that this works. Like a swan, they're white. Um, some rabbits are white. Those are things that are picked specifically for nature that work well for them. As far as I know, there are no naturally occurring leucistic or white snakes that are through like natural selection, a regular occurring thing. They're all mutations or morphs, just like everything else, that are essentially only around because either A, inexplicably lucky out in the wild, or B, we as people have decided we like it, so we're going to keep it, and then they get to survive and thrive and propagate and breed and then reproduce and carry those genes and pass them on to another generation, thus making more of them. So we're going to go over just a few different leucistic or white snakes. So starting off with the very obvious one is ball pythons. There are a number of different morph combinations that can make a blue-eyed leucistic white snake, or the bell that we all like to call it here in the hobby. So this is Denali. He is a bell. He is mixed with several different things as well as a leopard um, that make him so that way, like in with ball pythons, the bells are made up of multiple different incomplete dama genes. Um, butter, Mojave, Lesser, Russo, Bamboo, all of those things, if you put one to the other, can make this white snake. Some of them can be pure white. Some like the Super Mojaves end up getting this kind of like purpley brown head stamp like right there. Um, and that just can vary. Sorry about that. The dog's barking in the background. Um, they can hear me going off right now. Um, so there's a lot of things with leucism that doesn't mean they necessarily have to be 100% completely white or even have blue eyes like Denali here. Like for instance, in once again, ball pythons, there are these super fires or the black eyed leucistic snakes where it's the two incomplete dominant genes of the fire and they make a black eyed leucistic and sometimes they get patches of kind of like this orangey brown on them as well and that's still leucism. Technically, piebalds, like we all know the piebald ball pythons, that's actually a form of partial leucism where not every part got that weird gene receptor to turn off to where they're still making it look like a regular animal or the regular uh, phenotype, which is what appears on the animal. So only part of it becomes white. Um, and in that thought, so the cow retics, the ones that are getting really popular right now, they are born looking like Denali here, all white with blue eye, with blue eyes. And then as they get older with shedding and just getting bigger in general, they start to develop the orange and black spots till eventually they can become a fairly mottled marble looking cow like animal. And that's still a leucistic animal along those lines. So are ivory ball pythons and Burmese pythons where they can sometimes have orange on them, still spots, that's still a leucistic animal. So you have berms, balls, retics. Um, also in that kind of phase, we now have in boas, like we used to say that it was like a moon glow or a snow. Those things were really white. Well, now we have the super fire boas, the boa imperators. So those are the princess diamonds, or I think the emperors is what they call them, like male and female, where they're born black-eyed leucistic, like the fires, like the ivories, but as they get older, sometimes they can develop some little black freckles. Sometimes their nose can end up with like a cute little like orangey color on them, which looks really, really cool. Sorry, adjusting the headphones. Hopefully that didn't sound too bad. 
Um, but there are a lot of other ones too. So those are mostly the boas and pythons, although there's actually one other one and uh, there's actually two other ones. I apologize about that. The Colombian rainbow boa. So most people, when we think of rainbow boas, we think of the really bright, shiny ones in either the Brazilians or the Colombians. As far as I'm aware, the Colombians have more established morphs and one of those is a black-eyed leucistic. Looks really cool. They've been around longer than the Superfires, and it's really cool to have a blue a leucistic boa constrictor. Now, this last boa, I don't know if this is truly a leucistic animal or not. Everything that I could find seems to say that there is one, but any information out there with a picture attached, which was distinctly calling it what it was, which was the snow rosy boa which was a combination of two naturally occurring like in the wild animals that are frequently found in the wild, which is albino and anerithoristic, which the anerithoristic means it doesn't have the aranophores, which is the kind of red and brown genes, which makes it more of a stony gray colored animal, theoretically. And when you combine those two, you get a more paler animal, kind of like the snow boas too. Um, but as far, but that's still an albino animal that also happens to lack the aneurythrophores. Leucism is a little bit different. Um, and again, I go over that in the other video too. We just don't have time for that in this one. But if anyone knows for sure, if there is in fact a true leucistic rosy boa, please let me know down in the comments because I'm not 100% sure and I don't want to be throwing stuff out there that isn't necessarily true. So as I said before, leucism is kind of funky. Um, this is, he doesn't have a name yet. We haven't decided. Um, this is our pink leucistic southern pine snake or florida pine snake um so with with the southern pine snakes there's actually three distinct lines of leucism there's a pink there's a yellow and there's the white um this guy as you can see he kind of has like these weird model specs um supposedly this guy he came from a friend of mine um who works here at a local reptile store who hopefully uh uh, has offered to put up some of his more interesting collection and talk a little bit more about some animals that I'm not as versed on um, for some upcoming videos. But he got him from someone who kept him with other larger male pine snakes and they kind of beat him up. And so this discoloration, which is starting to go away as he's shedding longer, um, are basically healed scars from getting just kind of thrashed by larger male pine snakes. Um, but with that being said, so the southern pine snake, it's one of the three different subspecies of the pine snake that's not the Louisiana, so the blacks, the northerns, and then the southerns. Um, and in the southerns, they have a wide variety of different morphs, including uh, the leucistics. And this guy happens to be a pink. Um, I don't know if they are, I think you can get several different ones out of the same clutch. I don't know if it's, you have to have the genes for all three to get them, or if you have a white to a pink, you can sometimes get yellows too. I'm not 100% sure. I need to talk to somebody who actually works with them a little bit more than I do. But there are a wide variety of other blue-eyed leucistic colubrids that are available in the pet trade. The most popular of which is the Texas rat snake. So that's probably the most famous blue-eyed snake, at least before, like, the ball pythons were around. Um, and that is, you know, the regular Texas western rat snake that, you know, has arguably a very deserved attitude reputation. Another one that is very similar to the Texas rat snake, it's a colubrid, but a lot more manageable, which is the Mexican, oh, the Mexican, well, it's, a, you know, the Mexicana, but the gray-banded king snake. So the Lampropeltis alternus, so the gray band king snake, the ones that are all sorts of different um, patterns and variations of color between black, white, and gray, they can be variable depending where they're found. Well, it turns out there's a leucistic form of them too. Um, they're pretty rare. Not as many people work with them because they're mostly like a locale type animal. Um, but the few people who do work with them, they produce a pure white, blue-eyed king snake that would probably be more of a handleable animal than a six-foot angry western rat snake versus you know the four foot what are you doing weirdo um the you know four the three and a half to four foot ish gray banded king snake that for a king snake usually doesn't have too bad of a prey or of reactive prey drive compared to like a cali king snake or something like that um there there was and as long as we're talking about kind of like weird backstories there's another one which are there are leucistic hognose snakes um the very first hognose snake there was this whole thing about it was a theoretically heart like a wild caught field collected animal that where it was wasn't necessarily allowed to be done so and then a very well-known collector who was just trying to get like all the weird cool snakes 
either didn't know or didn't care about the illegalities or lack thereof of purchasing the snake or whatever may have you, but I'm not going to get into that story. But now they are there are more prevalent uh, leucistic hognose snakes, which are really cool. Unfortunately, we can't have them here in Colorado, but they're still a really cool little snake to have. Um, that's pretty much all of the ones that we can have like for the regular hobby trade there are some other ones out there that are pretty cool to see which are so for instance there are leucistic rattlesnakes um and yes i'm aware in some places you can have them um legally as pets in like some states or maybe in other countries i'm not really 100 percent sure um but there are leucistic rattlesnakes i don't remember if they are easterns or one of the western subspecies but they actually have a wide variety of different morphs. There's albinos, there's patternless, there's like weird, almost like super striped ones that I've seen pop up every once in a while. There's even scaleless. And I, I, I know I saw a picture of an albino scaleless rattlesnake, which looks super weird. I'm going to try to find it and put it up here. If not, you know, someone try to find those things because they're really weird looking. Um, and in that vein, there's also the leucistic cobras. There are monocled cobras that have been around for actually a few a number of years now that everybody's been really into but the monocled cobras they are the leucistic cobras they look really cool um sometimes they have a little bit of like the odd coloration too um and now they know we there are leucistic king cobras as made uh world famous by kevin mccurley's new uh blue-eyed leucistic king cobra i think it's lilith and i think they actually may have a het leucistic or they think het leucistic male for her too I'm not sure, I haven't really been keeping up with that. So as well as there is a rediscovery or newly discovered, I can't quite remember which, of a type of sea crate found off of the coast of, I believe, India. Um, so the sea crates, if you don't know, that is a type of sea snake. Um, I think um, the most common one is like the banded sea crate, those like kind of blue and black ones with the paddle-like tail. These ones don't have a paddle tail, it's just like looking like a regular tail. Um, the sea crates, the type of sea snake. Um, not sure how they're alive in the ocean, to be completely honest with you, because like most sea snakes, their their coloration, like all snakes, is meant to blend in with um, their surroundings. Like in the ocean, you think there wouldn't be anything like swimming through open ocean. But, you know, like say, for instance, the olive sea snake, it's dark on the top, light on the bottom, just like a great white shark or other, other fish. Dark on the top, predator looks down, oh, hey, there's, it just blends in with the expanse of the sea or the ocean floor, looks up, it blends in with the light coming in from the sun. So I don't know how a pure white snake, which I, maybe it's just us as being, you know, land lovers. Um, I just feel like there's a whole lot of other stuff out in the ocean that would want to eat a snake or could eat a snake. But I feel like a pure white adult snake is just a crazy thing. Um, one other one is a one that they recently discovered, I think it was in like 2017 or 2018. Um, is in Australia, they found a leucistic, just kind of like nondescript colubrid snake called a slatty gray snake. And I know a snake from Australia that's not venomous or a python, and it's crazy. Um, but basically, it just kind of looks like this nondescript grayish brown snake that's kind of like an Australian equivalent of like a rat snake or like a gray rat snake or something that they found it. It's an entirely black leucistic, a black eyed leucistic snake, and it looks really cool. Um, but those are just a few of the different kinds of pure white snakes, most of which we can own. Um, similarly to like the IMGs, um, a lot of them are morphs. And so depending on what they are, they can be pretty expensive. Like these guys, not as much, but like the princess diamonds, the cows, um, the leucistic gray banded king snakes, those will probably, you know, bring you a pretty, pretty penny. But they're still really cool, and it is an entirely possibility. If that's something that you are really interested in and want to be able to keep and play with, you can get them. You just got to, you know, put the feelers out there. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, thank you again for the people out there who are watching these and subscribed and regularly comment on these videos. I really, really do appreciate it. It makes me feel like I'm not just talking to my phone in my basement every day. Um, but if there's any content out there that you want to see, please let me know. Again, thank you, thank you so much. Please like and subscribe if you guys aren't one of the great ones. Um, getting really close to that thousand sub, um, at least by the time I'm recording this. And yes, Austin, I'm talking to you. I am working on what we talked about for that thousand subscriber uh, mile marker. Um, and I'm hopefully going to be doing something pretty cool to make it a little bit more fun for everybody too. So once again, thank you so much. Sorry for repeating myself on that. I know I do it all the time. Hope you're having a great day and we'll check you next time.